Hi, this is Josh with PDS Equipment, and in this video I'll be talking about how to add or remove Raster Link 7 from your computer. Uh, so first things first is what kind of PC can run Raster Link 7. Uh, and this web page that Mamaki has pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Um, I would say I would recommend a computer that has both a USB 2.0 and an Ethernet rather than just one. And the other question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to dedicate a computer that all it does is run Raster Link 7? Or do you want to use, you know, maybe the same computer that you use to do your graphics to also run Rasterlink? That just depends on your situation. I would say if I have like a roll-to-roll -roll printer rather than a flatbed, I might want a dedicated computer because that can run, you know, hours at a time without the user using it. And it won't tie up your personal computer or a computer that you use for other work. Um, the other thing to know is that each, each computer... Each software key will allow you to register up to four printers at once. So again, depending on your situation, you might be able to run, you know, you might have one operator running four printers from the same computer. Just depends on what you like to do. So the next thing, if you're uh, uninstalling Rasterlink to go to a different version or, uh, you know, maybe you're about to put it onto a different computer, when you can, it's nice to do a clean uninstall first. So the first thing you'll need to do is within Rasterlink, Go to this about page, and here you will see you will see your serial key. And you know, take a picture of that, write it down. It's important to keep that if you can. You'll have a physical copy somewhere, but in case that is lost, here's where you can find it before you uninstall and lose it off this computer. So once you have that serial key written down, close down raster link. And then in your search bar you can just type in uninstall or add or remove programs and that will take you to the Windows page where you can uninstall the Rasterlink 7 application. So here you scroll down to underneath all those Microsoft apps to Rasterlink 7. Click these three dots and just follow all the uninstall prompts that the Windows will give you pretty self-explanatory here. You'll be doing a lot of just clicking yes and next as you add and remove these programs. There is a way you can deactivate before, but so long as you have that key, Rationalink 7 will deactivate the computer for you as you uninstall. If uh, your computer is broken and you can't deactivate it, there's a way to deactivate it remotely. I'll show you how to do that later on. Okay, and once you get this page, you're done. So, we're done with Raster Link 7, now let's move on to the driver. You know, in some cases you might not need to uninstall the driver, but I'll show you how, just in case you're also rolling back to a different version of the driver, or if you think you're having an error with the driver and you want to clean install. Okay, that's it, pretty simple. I still have Raster Link 6 on my computer and Cutting Link, but that doesn't matter, those don't really interfere with 7. Okay, so once you have a clean computer that doesn't have any of those Rasterlink 7 files on it, you'll go to mamakiusa.com. Once there, you'll go to Support and Driver and Software Updates. From Driver and Software Updates, there's three things you'll need to download. The software, and then from this Inkjet Printer tab, your profiles and your uh, driver. So we'll start by doing the profiles and the driver. Um, here, I'll be installing a UCJV300 onto this computer. Of course, if you're doing a different uh, printer, it'll work the same way. So from UCJV300, I'm going to click on that. And let's start with the profiles. So my machine is a 375, and I know that it's an 8-color machine with white and clear, and that it is 170. If you're a double CMYK machine, you would use one of these. If you have light side line magenta, you'd use one of these. And if you're CMYK with white, you'll use one of these. Okay, once you're to this page, you can scroll down and select which profiles you want to download. Um, on some machines like a Mark II, there's only a few profiles, so you can just scroll down to the bottom and download all of them. 
On this machine, there is a lot, too many to download at once, so we're going to narrow it down to just the Mamaki made profiles, and we'll use the PET ones. Um, in my opinion, these PET profiles work pretty good on almost any media. With the UV machine, I've never noticed a big difference in how uh, different media profiles act. So some people say that they have in certain cases, but for the most part, any profile will work for any media. On solvent machines and a lot of other machines, that's not the case. With Mamaki UV machines, it tends to be the case, in my opinion, from what I've seen. Okay, so just scroll down to the bottom once you have the ones you want selected. Click Check All Files and Download Checked Files. That sometimes can take a while. Mamaki's website can get slow, depending on the time of the day, depending on your internet connection and such things. So... Don't be too frustrated if it takes a, a little bit longer than you'd expect for, for the downloads to happen. Okay, now that you have them downloaded, they'll all be in the zipped file. The easiest, quickest way to unzip, I think, is just to create a new file on your desktop. Name it whatever you want, and then just click and drag from the zip file into your new folder. Okay, so one out of three, we've got our profiles. Now let's go get our driver. So go back to one page, and from this page, we can click on driver utility right next to profile. Generally, you can just get the newest version of the driver. Um, there's a 32 and 64 bit version. Most computers are 64 bit, but if you're curious, you can just search the system information app in your search bar, and it should say what version your computer is. So mine is 64, like most will be. So I'm just going to download the newest version of the 64 bit driver. Scroll down to the bottom and download. Okay, once we got that, we can once again just start clicking, clicking next, clicking yes a few times, and it's all pretty intuitive and easy to do once you know how to down, where to download it from. Okay, we got two things down. I tend to wait until I have everything downloaded before I restart my computer, so I'm going to say no. Okay, now I'll go back a few pages again. And instead of clicking on Inkjet Printer, we'll click on Software. Of course, we'll go to Raster Link 7. Okay, so generally you can just download once again the, the latest version of either the 64-bit or 32-bit installer. Um, from time to time, um, there's an issue with one of the versions. So, for instance, 2.8 I know has an issue with uh, has an issue with the UCJV printing clear. So, uh, sometimes before downloading the version, it might be a good idea to give your dealer a call and ask, "Hey, is there a specific version of Rasterlink I should be installing?" And if it's not available, we can just email it to you. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use what's available from the Mamaki's website right now. Okay, once again, scroll down to the bottom and click download. Okay, and once that's done downloading, a folder will be created on your desktop where you can run the setup. And again, you're clicking yes and next.
All right. So I accidentally opened this tab up twice earlier. So there we go. We got our profiles. We got our driver download, and we have our link downloaded. Um, and now would be a good time, I think, to restart your computer. Okay, so now you've restarted your computer. The first thing you'll do is add those profiles into your profile manager. The machine will not re or the the software will not register the machine unless you have profiles for it. So again, we'll go to our search bar. Actually, I'll go over here, and we can navigate to our apps. You also should be able to just search for profile manager. But in my case, I have one profile manager for six. I want to make sure I'm going to use the profile manager for seven. So within this profile manager in the top left, that's where we have our profile installations. So we'll click on that. Navigate to that file we had earlier with all of our UCJV profiles in it. Click OK. Once you're in here, select all the profiles you want, which is usually all of them, and hit that down arrow and hit OK. And that's that. Simple enough again, if you know where to go. I will say you cannot have the profile manager and raster link open at once, so make sure you only have one or the other one or the other open. Okay. Now we're gonna finally open Raster Link 7. But actually, let's talk first about if you are coming from a bro broken computer that never got deregistered, that license key is still linked to that computer and you can't use it. So the same place we just went to find our profile manager. Also has this Mamaki web service page. And here you can click on the license button and deactivate when your PC is broken. And that allows you to remotely deactivate the license key so you can use it on a new computer. Okay, but for most of us, we won't need to do that, so we can just go ahead and open up Raster Link 7 for the first time. I will say, for everything we've done so far, including this, we want to keep the printer unplugged. Um, if it was unplugged, usually you just get an error message and the, your computer will tell you to make sure the machine's not plugged in. Okay, so we're going to activate via the internet and just fill out this little form your email address, company name, and the serial key, which is either in your raster link box or um, you saved from earlier. Okay, so from here we're going, going to finally, for the first time, plug in our printer, make sure our printer is powered on and plugged in. And we need to do that before we hit the add button. Okay, once we hit the add button, we'll navigate to which printer we have. In my case, it's a UCJV 300. And in my case, it is an eight color machine. Once we click on that, we should see an output port, either the USB if you're using a USB cable, or an ethernet if you're using an ethernet cable. I will say when people don't see this appear here, the most likely culprit is either they're clicking on the wrong model or color type, um, their USB cable's bad, I've seen that before, or they opened this tab before plugging in their printer. But anyways, once we have that USB port selected, or Ethernet, click on your available printer, name it whatever you want, I'll just call it UCJV301, and click OK. And again, just click, keep hitting OK and Yes through all that stuff. Okay, that's pretty it. Uh, a few small things. I like to click on function icon and rearrange my tabs in a way that makes sense to me. Uh, but for the most part, you're finished. Uh, the other thing you might want to do is change your favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a, f a new folder, a new file.
And let's see. Yeah, if that 12 by 12 isn't what I want for my default, I'll change it to 6 by 6. Then go into the Favorites tab. Within Quality, say, hey, apply the settings from that 600 job to my favorite. And yeah, just a bunch of little stuff like that to clean up your workspace to a way that you like. But that's it. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.